Here's a guy who thinks that the fact that people have visions that they claim to be of Jesus is evidence that he was resurrected. The fact that Jesus is appearing all over the world, almost every nation, for the last 2,000 years to Hindus, to Buddhists, to Muslims, to Jews, and they're converting, I, I don't know of any other faith that could make such a claim. So this is, this is, I think, a unique phenomenon. This video has the title, Do Modern Visions of Jesus Prove He Was Resurrected? This is a weird premise, however, because even if people did have supernatural visions of Jesus, what would that have to do with whether or not he was resurrected? If Jesus had simply died and stayed dead and is now simply a ghost, how would that make it harder for him to appear in people's dreams, or on toast, or other places? What does bodily resurrection have to do with any of that? It seems like a non sequitur. There, there's even a, a I think Bart, Bart's aware of this because he referenced Philip Wiebe's book Visions of Jesus, which which I'm uh, had en enjoyed reading in, in preparing uh, in preparation for my book, and and he talks about how there's even a separate study in the psychological understanding of the paranormal and and of, of these type of things called Christic visions because they're so common and there there's so many this is happening so mm. often. And so so that that's what what I would say is it's really truly a unique phenomenon with, again, the person of Jesus. So this is just another line of evidence to add to all these others that we've been talking about that I think suggests this Jesus rose from the dead. Okay. Again, why would Jesus have to rise from the dead in order to appear in people's visions? Why couldn't he do that as a ghost, if ghosts are real? People have visions of the Virgin Mary, too. Does that suggest that she also rose from the dead? But. Well, I don't really have anything to say about it. I mean, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure you do, but oh no, I really don't. I mean, because I don't think it's an I don't think it's any evidence of anything. I mean, okay. people have dreams about all sorts of things. It doesn't mean the thing is real. Bass wasn't even making a simple non sequitur like inferring that the fact that people have visions of Jesus means that Jesus is real. He's making an even sillier non sequitur that the visions mean Jesus rose from the dead. Even if Jesus was real, and even if he were in some sense supernatural or had supernatural powers, he could presumably appear in visions without rising from the dead. So what does rising from the dead have to do with anything? I mean, so I, uh, I'm sorry, I do, I've never thought about it, studied it. I, I read this book, and it's it was good book. It, one. It's very, it's very weird, very strange. I don't believe it really happened. As you know, the film disappeared. <laughs> well, well, I, yeah, I, I don't. But, yeah. but, but he interviewed. <laughs> just so you know, he, he's talking about a film that they believe they saw Jesus. I don't buy that either. Okay. But there was 32 individuals he interviewed that gave very yeah people yeah, from yeah, Canada, people remarkable. from Australia, yeah. people from America that gave powerful. I, I was okay. convinced that but they but have the fact seen people the have Jesus. dreams and visions of you know something like yeah, Christ. Yeah, well, it's not true. That, it's not true that it only happens in Christianity, of course. Okay, well, yeah. what other? Well, it's very famous we in the ancient it? world. I mean, people uh, in one of the one of the great healing gods of the Greeks was um, um, was Asclepius. And the way the uh, the healing rituals worked is that there would be there was a shrine of Asclepius. He was a, a divine being, a Greek divine being who, who could heal people. And people who were had a problem, they had breast cancer, or they had a maimed limb, or they had uh, cancer, they had whatever they had. Uh, they they were blind. They'd go to an Asclepium. It was called Asclepium, and it would uh, and they would um, the way it worked is you would go to sleep in there. And you'd spend the night, and Asclepius would come to the person and heal them. Uh, and we have abundant testimony, hundreds of, of uh, testimonies that this worked. Uh, and we actually have a number of these Asclepia where, that have been dug up by archaeologists that is, they're, they're actually pretty interesting because they would make uh, representations of the body part that got healed. And so you'd have their walls covered with, with breasts okay. and penises. Wow, I guess that's what Socrates meant when he said in the Phaedo that he owes a cock to Asclepius. And arms and eyes and right. ears, depending on what. And, and so it was all based on a, a dream cult. And Asclepius isn't the only one. We have all sorts of cults involving Zeus, for example. And so throughout history, of course, there have been lots of cults that claim that, that they're, uh, the person is being you know, dreamed of okay. and, and healing them. Oh, right. That is fascinating. Fascinating, you know, history. You know, I've, I've learned a lot about As Asclepius, but I just have to ask you, Bart, who has Asclepius appeared to lately? I guess visions only count as evidence if they stay in fashion.
What's the simplest explanation? That the continued visions of Jesus are a result of the continued widespread knowledge of Jesus? Or that Jesus rose from the grave? What is the more probable explanation? Uh, just last night, I had a really interesting dream. <laughs> and, you know, and it proves that Asclepius is raised from the dead because well, I dreamed about it. Let me it. ask you this. Throughout this exchange, Bart finds it increasingly difficult to maintain his patience with this dude's buffoonery. If people, <laughs> if people from all over the world started thinking that Asclepius was appearing to them, or Apollonius Septiana, or yeah. Moroni, yeah. or That'd any of great. them. Yeah. W wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't, wouldn't you go, wow, there may yeah, be something Yeah, that would be something. This. It would be something, but would it be something that would even remotely convince me that Asclepius actually existed? No, it really wouldn't. There are several hypotheses that I could come up with to explain it that are all more plausible than Asclepius supernaturally inserting himself into people's dreams. Yeah, that would be something. But it's happening with Jesus. I don't think so. No, 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 it's a fact that it's happening. No, it's it, not. It's, how many, it's, just a, how, it's just whether or not how many he's actually we, appearing look, to them. There are, 8 billion, there are 8 billion people in the world. The people who have never heard of Jesus do not have dreams of him. No, uh, one of the examples in my book is Samuel Morris, a, uh, a guy from Libya, and he, he heard the voice of Jesus. He went to Taylor, I don't know if you're at Taylor University. They have a statue for him. They, they, they dedicated a whole hall for him. He had never heard of Jesus. He heard the voice of Jesus. He survived this tribal attack. It's an amazing story. I mean, yeah, again, it's amazing. Great. like Pincus Lapid, you know, Great. you should look into these. Great. These are powerful. Yeah. Yeah. But there, there definitely Great. are people who have never heard of Jesus, and yeah. they have these visions. They okay. have these dreams. So one guy who, quite incredibly, says he never heard of Jesus and also that he heard the voice of Jesus is Basso's evidence that this isn't just a cultural phenomenon. And also, this somehow has something to do with the fact that there's a statue of him and he survived a tribal attack. This is not very impressive. Does it not seem much more probable that this dude actually did hear about Jesus at some point and lied about that fact? Or maybe he heard a voice and someone convinced him that it was the voice of Jesus. Because otherwise, how would he even know that the voice he heard was the voice of Jesus? Did the voice say, hi, I'm Jesus, and this guy was like, Jesus, that's a weird name. I've never heard of that name ever before in my entire life. Where does someone project an enemy apparition? What, what oh, example it happens do you have? sometimes. If you feel guilty, for example, if you feel guilty about what you've done to somebody leading to... Give me to an you. example. Um, well, if you read the psychological literature on uh, visions, you actually find a good bit of it. I Anything mean, specific? Well, they aren't names that you would... They're just people. I mean, yeah. they're just people, you yeah. know... The, Pretty sure. You, you Not did, in the you, literature. Not in the literature. Okay, well, I suggest you read it. A lot of Bass's rebuttals to Dr. Ehrman's arguments effectively amount to, nuh uh. <laughs> there is no projection of enemies in the literature. Dell Allison would, would, would. Yeah, so on that. Um, what I'd say is that some people have hypothesized that, that uh, Paul felt very guilty, or that, that Peter, sorry, Peter felt very guilty about his denial of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that he started out, you know, and so because of his guilt, he saw something. It's, it's very common. One of the most common reasons for seeing a bereaved loved one is because you felt like you mistreated them before they died, and the guilt creates a. Mm. And so, but again, that doesn't guarantee saying an unparalleled so claim saying, of resurrection of a Messiah that was crucified. Yes, Justin, not all bereavement visions are of people who were crucified. You got us there. He seems to think that the fact that the visions of Jesus that Peter had are somehow less likely to be bereavement visions because they were of a crucified guy who claimed to be the Messiah. At least that's how he seems to be wording it. I don't really see how that follows. He and, could have felt like he forgave him, I'm but not, doesn't mean he, he would have and, said that. And not only that, but I've never said it did. And so that isn't my claim. Um, you and said so, that what's, what's caused Peter's... Claim. Peter did not. He didn't have claim Jesus rose from the dead. Okay, what I've been saying is, mm -hmm. G Peter did not claim that the Messiah got raised from the dead the second he saw Jesus. What he thought was Jesus had come back to okay, life. You're saying he, he figured it out as an apoc apocalyptic Jew. I, I'm, I'm going with your argument. Yeah, but but Paul, how does Paul imagine? Right, I was a getting to that crucified man. I was getting to that. Uh, rising from the dead that he hates, that he thinks is cursed by God, appearing to him. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Okay, go ahead, Bart. Oh, goodness gracious. Bart looks like he's about to throw hands. Um, so, Paul did not get this information from Peter and James. Paul was persecuting Christians before he ever met Peter and James. So he knows the Christian claims already. There have been a lot of uh, psychological analyses about what might have happened to somebody who feels guilt 
over what they're doing to these people that would generate a vision and to have a conversion. As you probably know, there are instances in which people who are enemies of Christ have visions in which, in which they get converted. And so okay. Paul would be in that category. Yeah. Okay. But, but again, Sundar Singh, by the way, would be a great example of this. This was a, an Indian that became a great missionary. He was burning Bibles. He was persecuting Christians in the early 1900s, and ultimately he had a vision of Jesus, and he, and he was transformed like Paul. If you hear the stories of Christians who became Muslims or Jews who became Muslims, you will find plenty of stories of folks who went from being Islamophobic to being Muslim. For example, the Dutch politician Arnold van Dorn was a member of a notoriously Islamophobic political party who then converted to Islam. Nobody who isn't a Muslim thinks that this is evidence that Islam is true. But again, that happened after the Christian claim has already been made. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so did so Paul. Paul. So did Paul. Yeah. That's my point. It's exactly the same. So you can't say that it doesn't happen to enemies. So you think he understood... Because you just the, gave the example of an enemy where it happened. So you think he understood the Christian claim clearly as he was persecuted. He understood that they were saying Jesus got raised from the dead. Absolutely. Okay. And then Why he else was he persecuted? And then he imagined on the Damascus Road... I didn't say he imagined imagine. anything on the Damascus Road. What, what happened on the Damascus Road? I just said that there are lots of options, and we don't know because he doesn't okay. tell us. Okay. Well, he said thing, he, he, saw, he saw the Lord Jesus. That's what he said. He I said he saw the Lord Jesus, Jesus but what okay. did he, how did, okay, where did he see him? When did he see him? How did he see him? How close was he? Mm -hmm. Did they talk? Did well, they spend a week together? Seeing him's good enough, right? According to Acts 9.3, Paul heard a voice, asked the voice who it was, and the voice said it was Jesus. Since he didn't initially recognize the voice as being the voice of Jesus, and couldn't given that he never met Jesus, and would not have known what Jesus sounded like, he just believed what this voice was telling him. It's not even clear that he saw a person. Acts just says that he saw a light. After he heard the voice, he went blind for a while, then a guy named Ananias put his hands on his eyes, and then he could see again. Presumably this is part of the reason Paul believed that the voice he heard was the voice of Jesus. Given that temporary blindness can sometimes be caused by psychological trauma, I suspect that this is a more probable explanation than the account in Acts. He thought he saw Jesus. I've, I've been saying that all well, along. Well, he look, thought he saw Jesus. I'm not expecting... I'm asking why you don't, why you don't believe him. Why, why do you think Paul's wrong? Well, I think he's wrong because there are several much more plausible explanations for his purported experience. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.